Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for October 5th, 2023. Glad that you are with me. Today is World Teachers Day. Bring your Bible to school day. Roshana Rabah. Kiribati Education Day. National Above the Bus Day, as opposed to Under the Bus. And National Apple Betty Day. Let's go ahead and get started. Draw us in your love, Christ Jesus, and deliver us from fear. Ooh. Satis uh, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may be, may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Our reading for today is from Exodus chapter 29, starting with verse 1. Listen for God's word to speak. Now this is what you shall do to them to consecrate them, the priests, so that they may serve me as priests. Take one young bull and two rams without blemish and unleavened bread, unleavened cakes mixed with oil, and unleavened wafers spread with oil. You shall make them of choice wheat flour. You shall put them on one basket and bring them in the basket, and bring the bull and the two rams. You shall bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting, and wash them with water. Then you shall take the vestments and put on Aaron the tunic and the robe of the ephod and the ephod, and the breastpiece, and gird him with the decorated band of the ephod. And you shall set the turban on his head, and put the holy diadem on his turban. You shall take the anointing oil, and pour it on his head, and anoint him. Then you shall bring his sons, and put tunics on them. And you shall gird them with sashes, and tie headdresses on them and the priesthood shall be theirs by a perpetual ordinance. You shall then ordain Aaron and his sons. You shall bring the bull in front of the tent of meeting. Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on the head of the bull, and you shall slaughter the bull before Adonai. At the entrance of the tent of meeting, and shall take some of the blood of the bull and put it on the horns of the altar with your finger. And all the rest of the blood you shall pour out at the base of the altar. You shall take all the fat that covers the entrails and the appendage, appendage of the liver and the two kidneys with the fat that is on them and turn them into smoke on the altar. But the flesh of the bull and its skin and its dung you shall burn with fire outside the camp. It is a sin offering. Then you shall take one of the rams, and Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on the head of the ram, and you shall slaughter the ram, and shall take its blood, and dash it against all the sides of the altar. Then you shall cut the ram into its parts, and wash its entrails and its legs, and put them with its parts and its head, and turn the whole ram into smoke on the altar. It is a burnt offering to Adonai. It is a pleasing odor in offering by fire to Adonai. You shall take the other ram, and Aaron and his sons shall lay their hands on the head of the ram, and you shall slaughter the ram, and take some of its blood, and put it on the lobe of Aaron's right ear, and on the lobes of the right ears of his sons, and on the thumbs of their right hands, and on the big toes of their right feet, and dash the rest of the blood against all the sides of the altar. Then you shall take some of the blood that is on the altar and some of the anointing oil and sprinkle it on Aaron and his vestments and on his sons and his sons' vestments with him. 
then he and his vestments shall be holy, as well as his sons and his sons' vestments. You shall also take the fat of the ram, the fat tail, the fat that covers the entrails, the appendage of the liver, the two kidneys with the fat that is on them, and the right thigh, for it is a ram of ordination, and one loaf of bread, one cake of bread made with oil, and one wafer out of the basket of unleavened bread that is before Adonai, and you shall place all these on the palms of Aaron and on the palms of his sons, and raise them as an elevation offering before Adonai. Then you shall take them from their hands and turn them into smoke on the altar on top of the burnt offering of pleasing odor before Adonai. It is an offering by fire to Adonai. You shall take the breast of the ram of Aaron's ordination and raise it as an elevation offering before Adonai, and it shall be your portion. You shall consecrate the breast that is raised as an elevation offering, and the thigh that was raised as an elevation offering from the ram of ordination, from that which belongs to Aaron and his sons. These things shall be a perpetual ordinance for Aaron and his sons from the Israelites, for this is an offering, and it shall be an offering by the Israelites from their sacrifice of offerings of well-being, their offering to Adonai. The sacred vestments of Aaron shall be passed on to his sons after him, They shall be anointed in them and ordained in them. The son who is priest in his place shall wear them for seven days when he comes into the tent of meeting to minister in the holy place. You shall take the ram of ordination and boil its flesh in a holy place. And Aaron and his sons shall eat the flesh of the ram and the bread that is in the basket at the entrance of the tent of meeting. They themselves shall eat the food by which atonement is made to ordain and consecrate them. But no one else shall eat of them, because they are holy. If any of the flesh for the ordination or of the bread remains until the morning, then you shall burn the remainder with fire. It shall not be eaten, because it is holy. Thus you shall do to Aaron and to his sons. Just as I have commanded you, over seven days you shall ordain them. Also every day you shall offer a bull as a sin offering for atonement. Also you shall offer a sin offering for the altar when you make atonement for it, and shall anoint it to consecrate it. For seven days you shall make atonement for the altar and consecrate it, and the altar shall be most holy. Whatever touches the altar shall become holy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So, our reading for today is a very, very long one, and a very strange one for us. The things that we're talking about here, this is weird, right? This is cultic practices that we are not used to. Um, And ultimately, some of these things we just do not understand. We can, there's, there's a element of sort of the sacrifice of an animal in order to sort of curry favor with a divine being. We can kind of get that, seeing as how it's, it is a practice across uh, the ancient world. This is just a common thing. In order to worship a god, you need to sacrifice an animal. Um, there's an element of that that we see in sort of the, the writings of scripture that is connected to blood as the sort of life force of the animal. And that that life force, that blood, is somehow connecting us to God, there is sort of the idea of smoke being um, sort of this sacrificed animal being a a um, proxy for the one who is making the sacrifice, in this case, the, the priests. And that because we can't go up to God, right, uh, partially because of our unclean, our unholy state, but also because we're sort of... Um, fleshly, and that doesn't necessarily mean material versus immaterial, that means um, sort of our flesh, our uh, our body is impure, imperfect, it, it is subject to death. 
but God's sort of body spirit, Pneuma, is different. And we can't go up to where God is, and so we make the sacrifice. There's the idea of this atonement. There's also this idea that this bo the body of the animal is being burnt up and it goes up in smoke. Um, as this pleasing aroma before God, we have that in this, in this scripture. And that sort of goes into God's presence when we cannot go. And so, in a way, we are going with the, the, the smoke up into God's presence. But ultimately, it just, it's weird. And especially if, as we get into things like this idea that blood is something that cleanses, is so distant from our cultural understanding that it just seems strange. It seems cultic. It seems um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Right. It it seems like um, yeah, cultic pagan. Right. There's there are those elements around this worship that is so distant from where we are. It just seems strange. And it's okay to acknowledge that. It's okay to recognize this seems weird. This doesn't really make sense to us. But we can understand that ritual is helpful. That ritual is and worship and practices and cults, sort of cultic practice, helps us to understand things that are deeper. And sometimes it's that mystery that the fact that this is not explained that actually draws us closer because in the Western world we tend to be we really like things to be explained we really like to understand things and there's something about cultic mystic pagan practices that are mysterious that there's something deep going on here there's something primal going on here that we ultimately do not understand. We just know that there's something. So we hear of these sort of practices and it feels brutal, it feels gross, it feels all of those things. Now to a certain extent, it would not have felt as weird and gross to them. Certainly it would not have. Because again, this is all common practice among the people. The sacrifice of animals is for the ancient Hebrew people. That is the primary way that people in general worship their deity is through the sacrifice of animals. Um, and so this is this is sort of the way that this uh, is it manifests because that's what worship looks like. Um, so whether it is God sort of giving them these sort of honing these practices that they would be have been used to and making it um, sort of like guiding them, nudging them in the right direction, or whether it is sort of them taking the cultic practices that they would have been familiar with in the cultures that they have come from and sort of nudging it towards God directing it towards God, Adonai, or most likely sort of a combination of the two. This is, this worship, this cultic practice is culturally bound. It makes sense for them. It does not make sense for us. Sacrifice of animals is something that we see as um, primitive, as as pagan, as something that we don't really want to participate in. Even the Jewish practice doesn't include sacrifice of animals because the temple has been destroyed. And so there's a shift more towards sort of a spiritual practice. And that is the form that our worship takes. It's around words, it's around scripture, it's around singing, because that's what worship means in our culture. Um, so just to look at some of these things, um, there's a sacrifice of a bull, and that is, you notice some of it is sacrificed on um, an 
and as a uh, offering of smoke, so it's burnt up completely. On the altar, this would be the one um, outside the tabernacle tent itself, the, the tent of meaning. Let me show that picture. Um, this would be, oh, you can't see my mouse, but the one kind of up front, this is the big altar, most likely. Um, and that is going to be completely consumed. So it all goes up in fire. The rest of the body of that bull actually is sacrificed outside the camp. It's unclean. So that's kind of an interesting thing. Um, then you have the two rams. The first ram mostly is completely burned up. The second ram uh, is... There, there are specific parts, the right breast and the right thigh, I think, um, that are taking, taken oh, off of that and lifted up as an elevation offering. And then that's boiled and then the priests get to eat that. You have the giving of the vestments and you have the sprinkling of blood on the altar. And that's part of that is to um, sort of sanctify the altar itself. But it's also splashed on Aaron and his sons as the priests. This is where that is really gross for us. That's really weird for us. We're not sure what to do with that. Um, in some ways, culturally, it is similar to sort of the waters of baptism. Sometimes some of our siblings will, will do sort of a remembrance of baptism where you sprinkle water. You're in the splash zone for the, for the worship service. It's a very similar sort of idea that in the splashing of this water, we are, are cleansed. Um, by this blood. Again, this is cultural assumptions that don't make sense to us, but we can kind of understand the symbolism-ish. Um, uh, yeah, so they eat. There's there's lots of things about these vestments being very holy. They are passed from person to person. So when Aaron is done being the high priest, the next high priest is going to wear that same set of clothing. Again, that seems kind of weird to us, but it makes sense. They're going to be wearing that for seven days before the, the beginning of this. So they're going to be wearing it all the time. Um, lots of things that, uh, that are really interesting. Another thing to just note is something that I noticed was this bread is being made out of wheat. Uh, that would have been a very precious commodity in the sort of context of at Mount Sinai, they have some wheat, certainly, but they probably don't have a huge amount. Mostly they're eating manna. And so perhaps this has been revised or, or with a view for a time when they're going to be in a land and they can have wheat um, for the ordination and um, uh, the ordination of, of future priests. You also notice that there is not only an ordination, this sort of sprinkling of blood setting aside with cultic practices, but also a uh, anointing. They are Mashiach. They are the anointed ones. They're, there's oil poured on their head, and that is, again, a sign of this sort of Eden blessing pouring out of them. Um, in Psalm, I don't remember what it is, but this idea of... of how good and pleasant it is for the people to gather together. It's like um, the oil of uh, oil poured on Aaron's head, pouring over his beard. Um, this is this is this image, this image of oil pouring over Aaron in this ordination. This is a joyous event. This is a time when there is now a representative. Um, maybe in a unique and different way to Moses, a re representative to go before Adonai, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. There is a, God, a person who can talk to God for the people. Um, and all of this practice, all of this sort of like rigmarole, this pomp and circumstance, this cultic practice is all to set apart this person say this is something special this is something mysterious this is something wonderful so what does what is the role of ritual in your life maybe it's in our worship service maybe it's a special way that you i don't know prepare for a football game it's a special way that you um you know, what does your morning look like? What is your morning routine? And what happens if you come out of it? 
out of that or, or that routine is disrupted. Ritual and sort of acting out these things are important for our lives. How do you react when you hear about things like the sacrifice of animals and the splashing of blood? What is that? How does that strike you? How does that, what does that mean to you? I invite you to take some time to reflect in journal, in prayer, in meditation. And when you're ready, we'll join our hearts together in prayer. Let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We pray this day for the needs of our congregation and community. Community. We give a prayer of thanksgiving for Kelly, who has received her Master's of Music Therapy Diploma after a long process. Continued prayers for the Mayfields in their uh, the continued sort of working out of house buying process. For Adam and his family, a former play school child um, who was diagnosed with cancer. He started five days of chemo and neuroblastoma treatment in a long battle. Pray for Matt and Jenny, a friend of mine and Louise's. We pray for the family and friends of Phyllis, a fr sister of Steve, a friend of Bill's, who passed away this week. For the family and friends of Mel, Mike's uncle, who passed away last week. And Linda Lapie, who is actually back in the hospital. And all the other prayers that we bring this day. Make us worthy, Lord, to serve our siblings throughout the world who live and die in poverty and pain. Give them today, through our hands, their daily bread. And through our understanding, love. Give peace and joy. Amen. Blessed are the poor for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are the hungry, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness and justice, for great is their reward. Come Holy Spirit, we pray that your fruit would be in us, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Dear Jesus, help us spread your fragrance everywhere we go. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to separate from you. From the malicious enemy defend me, and bid me to come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Through our lives and by our prayers, may your kingdom come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button. 
Go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Find us on Facebook and Instagram. Our liturgy today came from the uh, book uh, Common Prayer, A Liturgy for Ordinary Radicals by Shane Claiborne and Jonathan Wilson Hartgrove. Our reading came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible with my own little tweets. You can join us on YouTube for a video version of this daily prayer. You can listen to it on Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. And you can sign up for a daily email through Substack. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.